Okay, so welcome. Welcome to this live stream. My name is Dr. Haroon Gadraj, Director of the Vein Care Centre in, Dor in Dorset. Now, if you're confused about leg veins, what's cosmetic, what's medical, what's serious, what's urgent, you've come to the right place. Uh, in the next half hour to 45 minutes, I will cover the various conditions that affect leg veins, and I'll tell you how you can do a self-assessment and decide for yourself what's serious and what's urgent. Now, as I've said previously, um, I'm fairly new to this technology. Um, live stream is uh, fairly new for, to me, and this is the first time I've done a live stream on YouTube. So please, please uh, introduce yourself in the comment section, say hi, um, tell me what you found interesting as we go along, post some questions, and uh, tell me what you found very helpful, what I've missed and what you'd like covered in future um, live streams. Uh, some of you will know me, some of you will be patients of mine who are just checking in and showing your support. Some of you might have watched some of my previous YouTube videos and some of you might be new to this channel and might not know me at all. So my name is Dr. Haroon Gadraj, lovely to meet you. I'm a vascular surgeon by training. I worked in the NHS for many years. I left the NHS in 2008 to specialize exclusively in treating people with the full range of vein conditions affecting the legs as well as other parts of the body. In 2002, my wife and I set up the Melbury Clinic Vein Care Center and I have assembled with my wife I've assembled a team of uh, specialists, healthcare professionals, and administrative um, people who help with the running of the clinic. And it's very much a team approach. Um, so very proud of our team. Um, and um, we are very proud to be able to help you give information and help you with your vein condition. So let's get started and let's talk about what's cosmetic and what's medical. Um, first of all, let me say that isolated spider veins or veins on the face are nearly always um, cosmetic or aesthetic. It's very rare that broken veins on the nose or the cheeks are medical or indeed serious. Now there are a few exceptions. Obviously, if you've got a rash or if you are unwell generally, then it may be that these spider veins are part of a generalized skin condition or a medical condition that is manifesting. But if you've got a few little broken veins on your nose or your cheeks, those are not medical, they are cosmetic. Equally, if you've got enlarged hand or arm veins, these are very, very unlikely to be cosmetic or aesthetic. There are a few exceptions. For example, people who might have a clot in the deep veins of their arms might, or their arm rather, might lead to some enlargement of hand and arm veins. You might suspect this particularly if one hand has enlarged um, hand veins or arm veins and the other arm is normal, but in general this is extremely rare. I don't think many vascular surgeons will see uh, deep vein problems in the hand and arm. So this is usually a feature of um, being extremely thin. So people who work out a lot in the gym, who don't have a lot of body fat, they may have prominent arm and hand veins. Or it may be that as we get older, the collagen in the hand and arm veins um, is, is uh, thin, the uh, veins give way and they enlarge. So some degree of boniness of the hands and enlargement of the arm veins is very common as we get older. So hand and arm veins almost always um, cosmetic. Um, other veins on the body, for example, enlarged breast veins, they're usually cosmetic. Um, again, there are some rare conditions. So if the veins are particularly prominent in one breast, for example, that might be 
due to an underlying problem which needs uh, further consideration by a healthcare professional. But in general, enlarged breast veins, blue veins on the vest, on the breast or chest, almost, almost always uh, cosmetic or aesthetic. And, and it's important to distinguish this now, particularly during uh, COVID, because obviously in the UK at least, uh, medical clinics are exempt from the need to close during lockdown. Now, the vein care centre is CQC registered, that is we're registered with our regulatory body, the Care Quality Commission, to see patients who might have a medical condition to assess them and to uh, give them advice, make a diagnosis and to treat them. However, um, we do not open to provide cosmetic vein treatments. So if you have some broken veins on the face or enlarged arm veins, breast veins, it's very unlikely we will see you during the current restrictions because these are almost always um, cosmetic or aesthetic. Now, of course, we assess people on the telephone or by email on a case-by-case -case basis, and if there are reasons to suspect that this might be a medical condition, then of course we will see you. So we will not generally see people currently, uh, once these lockdown, once this current lockdown ends and we move into tier two, we probably will not be seeing people with um, broken veins on the nose, cheeks, arm veins, or breast veins. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's turn to leg veins. Now let me say straight away that problems with leg veins do range from minor to serious, but in my opinion, all leg veins, even if they're very minor, have an underlying medical problem. So although they may be minor, it's wrong to categorize them as cosmetic. And this is important because some people might be um, a little confused about why we might see people in our clinic with leg spider veins, and we won't see people in our clinic with face spider veins. And that's because there is a common misconception, both amongst the public and also amongst many healthcare professionals, including vascular surgeons, that spider veins, broken veins on the legs, are just cosmetic. Now that's not true. Um, it may be a manifestation of, a skin manifestation, of an underlying vein problem. And we now know that even spider veins or blue veins, uh, the medical terms for those two incidentally are telangiectasia and reticular veins. So the underlying issue with those is reflux. Now the purpose of the veins in our legs is to carry blood back from the foot up to the heart. Um, it may seem obvious, but obviously your heart pumps blood out to your legs in arteries and then the blood has to return from your legs back to your heart in veins. Now uh, if the delicate folds in the lining of the veins called valves which open and close, if they don't close properly then gravity can pull blood down in the wrong direction and whenever anything travels in the wrong direction in the body we call it reflux. When it happens in the veins under the skin we call it superficial vein reflux. And spider veins are always associated with um, superficial vein reflux underneath the skin, which may not be obvious. And uh, we have um, increasing evidence now that um, either reflux from deep veins through so-called perforator veins or reflux in blue veins leading into spider veins or varicose veins causes, um, causes spider veins. So they may be a cosmetic concern. So the motivation for seeking advice may be that the person who has them doesn't like the look of them. 
but they are not just a cosmetic problem. They have a medical cause. It may not be serious, um, but it's certainly not just cosmetic. And we, I can show you now, um, this lady, let me just get this photograph up. Um, this lady has some spider veins on the outer part of her left leg around the knee and extending down into the calf. I've taken a clinical photograph um, and I've got also a clinical photograph with polarizing light. Polarizing light um, will filter out the reflection from the skin and allow us to see a little deeper under the skin. And as you can see in the image on the right, it's much more clear that there are connecting veins. And although she has what appear to be just straightforward spider veins on her leg, there are connections uh, deeper. Uh, we've also got a technique called near infrared imaging. Let me show you a picture of that. Now, this near infrared image that uh, I'm showing you shows how uh, around and underneath this cluster of spider veins by the knee, she's got a network of veins underneath the skin which are filling into this area. Now, near, near infrared is a way of um, looking underneath the skin and seeing the uh, connections. And um, as a routine, I take clinical photographs, including near infrared, which allows me to identify where the connections are, where the feeding veins are, and without uh, treating those feeder veins, you don't get good results. So straight off, you can look at your legs and you can see spider veins. Um, one other thing to tell you is that spider veins, yes, they can be treated quite easily with a technique called microsclerotherapy. This is a treatment in which a very fine needle is put into the vein under direct vision, hence the micro bit, and we inject a prescription medicine directly into those spider veins to cause the lining of the vein to be disrupted. Then the spider vein in the skin reacts by collapsing, shrinking and dispersing. That's why uh, the prescription medicine that we inject is called a sclerosant, and that's why we call the technique microsclerotherapy. Now, in itself, microsclerotherapy is a very straightforward treatment, and the results are good, provided that we make sure there's no underlying superficial vein reflux, and provided that we also treat any feeder veins, and that's why um, polarizing light photography is important and that's why near infrared imaging is very important. And if we turn now back to that lady whose photographs I showed you, we can look, let me find it, we can look at the results um, 12 months later. Now this result was obtained because, and it is a very good result, was obtained by careful injection of the underlying feeder veins and also careful injection of the spider veins themselves. So microsclerotherapy is a good technique and it does give very good results, provided the cause of the spider veins and any underlying feeder veins are identified and treated. So yes, it's not cosmetic. Yes, um, it's not a serious, it's a minor condition. But no, it is not simply cosmetic, uh, it is medical, it does need to be assessed properly. That usually means ultrasound, clinical photographs, near-infrared imaging, and it does need to be treated properly, both the feeder veins and the um, spider veins themselves. So, you can look at your legs and you can see if you've got spider veins and you can determine whether you've got a problem with your veins. Now, as I say, it's not serious, it's not urgent, it's not um, a problem that needs to be dealt with urgently, but like all vein conditions in the, in the leg, if it's not treated, it will deteriorate and go on to a more, perhaps, perhaps a more serious, not inevitably, but it, it may do. 
So the next thing to consider is swelling. Now, many specialists, again, uh, don't believe that uh, varicose veins or vein problems are a serious or frequent cause of leg swelling. And this is simply not the case. We now know, and increasingly, vein specialists are recognizing that superficial vein reflux is an important cause of leg swelling. Uh, and this is how it happens. As I've said before, your arteries carry blood to your leg. Those arteries, as they get further away from the heart, become smaller and smaller, and they eventually become the capillaries of the, of the uh, skin and the underlying tissue, as well as capillaries in muscles and other tissues of the leg. Now, when they get so small that they become capillaries, a fluid, which is rich in oxygen and nutrients, moves out of the capillaries to bathe the tissues. And this uh, fluid is called lymph. Lymph bathes the tissues and it gives up its oxygen and nutrients to the cells and the cells give to the lymph waste products and carbon dioxide. And that lymph comes out of the capillaries towards the artery side and towards the vein side, the capillaries absorb the, the uh, lymph and carry it back to, the, back to the heart. Now we used to think that most of that fluid was, was carried in lymphatics. These are delicate vessels that carry lymph fluid back, but we now know that actually a very, very significant amount of lymph is carried back from the capillaries in veins. And so if there is superficial vein reflux and if there is back pressure on the veins at the capillary side, that lymph will actually build up. And this is a condition called edema. And I've just had a cup of tea brought to me by Mrs. G. Thank you very much, Mrs. G. That's very kind. Thank you. Good. Um, excuse me. So um, vein conditions do cause um, edema, leg swelling. And um, many, many healthcare professionals and uh, GPs, as well as vascular surgeons, will treat edema with water tablets or diuretics. And this is not right. Now, um, ideally, we need to treat the superficial vein reflux, or at least as a minimum, we ought to consider uh, compression stockings. Compression stockings or medical hosiery is another topic altogether which I'll cover uh, another time but edema and leg swelling is an important sign and complication of venous disease and I'm going to show you now another clinical photograph. Excuse me, let me get this up. Um, now this is a, a lady who came to see me. As you can see she's clearly got varicose veins affecting her right leg, not quite so severe on the left leg, but what you can see, and this is particularly prominent and easily seen when looking at the legs from, the, from behind, the back of the legs, you can see that just above her heel where the Achilles tendon is, there is no hollow. She's got quite a lot of ankle swelling and she has got a dent at the top of her socks uh, and this uh, I think I saw this lady in the morning and this amount of indentation from socks is in, indicates that there's a lot of edema a lot of swelling of the um, tissues caused by lymph fluid um, now although she hasn't got a huge amount of varicose veins to see as you can see she's got some skin changes and the skin is discolored and it's um, swollen. And uh, when we did the scan, we saw, we saw that she had a lot of superficial vein reflux. And when we treated her, there's a huge difference in the appearance of her legs and the edema fluid has largely gone. Um, and she, this was without wearing any compression hosiery at all. So leg swelling is a very important sign of vein disease and superficial vein reflux. 
So once again, you can look at your own legs. Um, if you've got a lot of leg swelling, then um, it's quite likely, even if you haven't got varicose veins, because it can, it can occur without the presence of varicose veins. If you've got um, leg swelling, uh, then it's possible you have venous disease. Now, the other thing you can look at yourself is your legs, the skin of your legs, and you might notice varicose eczema. Now, um, varicose eczema must be one of the most uh, misused terms, really, and misunderstood. Um, varicose eczema is a condition where actually the skin is being damaged by the problem with the veins. Now, if there is back pressure in the veins caused by superficial vein reflux, then the skin doesn't get nourished properly. Um, the capillaries are not able to exchange nutrients and oxygen efficiently to the skin, and the skin undergoes continual damage due to lack of nutrients and oxygen, and it becomes very inflamed and um, the skin has a very limited number of ways of reacting to uh, injury and damage and inflammation and it will often become um, red, itchy, flaky, um, it will become discoloured, it may become pigmented. All of these are sort of generic reactions to an injury or a, pro or a problem. Um, so that's why it's called eczema and it often occurs in the presence of varicose veins but you don't need varicose veins to have uh, varicose eczema. Varicose eczema can be caused by severe superficial vein reflux or perhaps by a previous deep vein thrombosis but it's the anatomical position, it's the place where the eczema occurs on the leg that gives you a strong suspicion. So if, for example, you've been told you have eczema around your ankle, whether it be on the inside, that's the most frequent, or the outside, that's less frequent, then it's possible you have this condition called varicose eczema. Um, and let me show you a picture of varicose eczema. So this gentleman has um, this gentleman does have varicose veins. As you can see, he's got varicose veins coming from below the knee on the right side, wandering down the leg and around his uh, ankle, just above his ankle on the inner side, he's got discoloration of the skin. It's very itchy and uh, that's varicose eczema. What happens to varicose eczema when you treat the problem? Well, it depends. It depends on how, where, the, where in the evolution, at what stage, we treat the varicose eczema. If we treat the varicose eczema early on, then a lot of the damage to the skin will be repaired by the person's normal healthy repair mechanisms. Once you treat the reflux, the continuing damage is stopped and the repair mechanisms, the healing processes, get the upper hand as it were and the skin often returns to normal. If the varicose eczema has been present for a long time, some of that skin damage will be beyond repair, be irreparable, and it may not return to normal, even though we have completely abolished the reflux and returned the veins, the vein function, to normal. So varicose eczema is not always completely uh, reversible. Uh, and the importance of varicose eczema is that it is a warning sign that if this is not treated, then um, the condition may deteriorate to the point of a leg ulcer. So varicose eczema is serious, and there is some degree of urgency. Not everyone with varicose eczema will inevitably get a leg ulcer. Those who do may not get it next week or even next year, but left long enough, and if neglected, Varicose eczema is the stage before a leg ulcer. Now I'm not going to cover uh, leg ulcers um, specifically in this uh, live stream because if you have a leg ulcer you will, you will know. Um, it's quite clear that there's a break in the skin. However, 
If you've got varicose eczema that is very weepy, um, there's a lot of discharge, clear fluid, or if it becomes um, intensely itchy and very painful, then that is urgent. So um, varicose eczema should not be neglected. It's not usually urgent. It's serious, but it's not usually urgent. But if it begins to weep, or if it becomes very painful, then it is obviously urgent. The next stage is a serious leg ulcer. And once you get a leg ulcer, they can be very difficult to heal and they tend to recur because once the skin has been broken and damaged, even if it heals, it will heal with some degree of scarring and that scar tissue is always vulnerable in the future to knocks or injuries. So um, although we can treat the underlying problem and cure the underlying problem, once you get a leg ulcer, the skin is never 100%, it's never normal, it's always vulnerable. And so you're always at risk of getting an, another leg ulcer. You don't really want to get to that stage. Um, and varicose eczema is the stage before a leg ulcer. So we've covered, um, let's see what we've covered. We've covered spider veins, we've covered swelling, we've co covered eczema. Um, lumps. Well, varicose veins are lumpy um, and usually people have very little doubt about whether they've got um, varicose veins or not. It's usually quite straightforward. Let me show you a picture of straightforward, uncomplicated varicose veins. Here we are. Now you can see there's lumpy veins in both legs. They're classic varicose veins. But if you've got one or two lumps in your leg, you may not be sure, is this, is this a varicose vein or is it some other lump? Well, I frequently see people who, for example, might have a lump in the groin that they, they might think they have a hernia. Turns out it's a varicose vein in the groin. Um, they might have a lump further down the leg. Uh, they might think they've got a varicose vein. Turns out they've got a fatty lump, such as a lipoma. For, for straightforward, uncomplicated varicose veins, the best DIY test to determine if it's a varicose vein or not is simply to um, lie down, elevate your leg perhaps against a wall, and the lump will disappear. Um, if it doesn't disappear when you put your leg up, then it's probably something else. If it's a lump in the groin and it doesn't, appear, it doesn't disappear, then it might be a hernia, you need to go and see your doctor urgently because hernias can get strangulated. Um, if it's a lump somewhere else on the leg, then it might, be, it might be a fatty lump, a lipoma. If it's around the ankle or the knee, it might be a cyst or a ganglion. So not all lumps um, on the leg are varicose veins. But in general, I think it's really quite straightforward for you to know whether um, a lump is a varicose vein or not. Now, are varicose veins um, cosmetic? Well, not strictly because varicose veins uh, are caused by superficial vein reflux. And um, we know that superficial vein reflux gets worse with time and deteriorates. And we know that when we scan patients, if nothing is done, the scan will get worse and the person with varicose veins is likely to develop complications. So a rough and ready statistic for you to remember is that if you have straightforward varicose veins and you do nothing for um, 12 years, then there's a 50% chance that you might suffer a complication such as phlebitis or varicose eczema or, um, or um, or something more serious like a leg ulcer, for example. So they will get worse. Varicose veins don't get better. They will get worse, they will deteriorate, and there's a possibility that over the course of a decade or so, you will have a complication. Now, are they serious? Um, well, it's a reasonably serious medical condition. Are they urgent? Well, clearly not. And um, some people are told, particularly by their GP, where it's difficult to access NHS treatment, that their varicose veins are simply cosmetic. It's not strictly true. I think what perhaps the GP is trying to tell the patient um, in a, an abbreviated way is that their varicose veins are not urgent at the moment and that 
uh, access to varicose vein treatment on the National Health Service at present is extremely difficult and um, one way perhaps of um, rationalising it on both sides, be it the GP and the patient, is to say that they're cosmetic. But we know, because we do ultrasound scans, we know because we've seen deterioration of our patients during lockdown, we've seen many patients who've developed uh, problems during lockdown, they're not simply uh, cosmetic. Ha um, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence uh, indicates that patients who have varicose veins, who have symptoms, should be considered for treatment. Uh, and that leads us to the fifth thing that you can assess yourself. Do I have symptoms of vein problems? Excuse me. Well, some patients have lumpy varicose veins, they have no symptoms whatsoever. Some people have quite a lot of symptoms, and these symptoms are usually those of aching, heaviness, um, they may have some degree of swelling, uh, it may not be as severe as the lady I showed you, but some degree of swelling around the ankles towards the end of the day. Um, they may have restless legs, particularly at the end of the evening, and it may be that it, it, it um, causes them difficulty getting off to sleep. So all of these are the typical features of um, vein disease. Aching, throbbing, heaviness, and um, some degree of swelling. Symptoms are usually worse at the end of the day. They're fine in the morning, swelling, symptoms, um, very little in the morning, gradually deteriorate during the course of the day are aggravated by prolonged periods of standing and are elevated by, I'm uh, sorry, alleviated by putting your legs up, by um, elevating your legs in the evening, either by use of a reclining chair, my favorite in the evening, or by putting them up on a stool. Um, they're also helped by wearing medical grade compression stockings. So symptoms of ache, throbbing, swelling, um, restlessness uh, are greatly helped by wearing medical grade compression. Now these are the typical symptoms of vein disease and when they're typical, particularly if they're helped by wearing medical stockings, then it's extremely likely that the symptoms will be uh, improved by having the superficial vein reflux and the varicose veins treated. When the symptoms are atypical, then there's usually some other cause. There may be varicose veins present, but there's some other cause, whether it be perhaps arthritis of the hip, or referred pain from the back, or perhaps a nerve pain. That's usually, it's usually the case that um, the symptoms are due to something else. Varicose veins are very common, about one in three, one in up almost 50%, depending on your age. All these things become more common as we get older, varicose veins are very common, leg symptoms are very common, and, some, and we need to be very careful before we say to a patient, yes, treatment will help your symptoms. If symptoms are the main driver for seeking treatment, and if in any way the symptoms don't fit properly, then a trial of medical socks will help. So again, you can do this yourself, you can assess your symptoms uh, quite straightforwardly and you can buy a pair of medical grade compression hosiery. Now, medical grade compression hosiery is usually safe for nearly everyone, uh, provided you don't smoke, you don't have any circulation problems and you buy a low grade medical compression stocking and it's very unlikely that wearing medical compression will cause you any problems. If wearing them helps your symptoms, then it's quite likely that seeking treatment will help as well. So this covers essentially the things that you can do yourself at home to assess whether you've got a serious or um, urgent medical problem. Um, so far, I would say to you that varicose eczema is the most serious medical problem that we've covered. 
Uh, I think it's also extremely urgent if it's weeping. It means that the skin has broken down and that lymph fluid or perhaps even um, some infection of the varicose eczema has developed. And so weeping skin exudates some, some discharge from the varicose eczema means that it's urgent. Now there are other urgent issues with veins. Um, one is phlebitis. I recall recently, and a lady allowed me to share this story and these pictures, uh, a lady I saw recently after lockdown was um, having a scheduled treatment and as is my routine, I scan patients now before their treatment and she had developed um, an area of phlebitis in her leg. Now phlebitis is a, a bit like varicose eczema. Phlebitis is one of those confusing terms. You might think it's an infection, you might think it's just an inflammation, but actually phlebitis is caused by clot within a superficial vein and it's the clot within the superficial vein that causes the itis, that causes the phlebitis. It causes the redness, the discomfort, the hardness. Why is it urgent? Um, well, it's urgent as well as being serious because that clot within the superficial vein can extend into the deep vein and it can give rise to a deep vein thrombosis. So since lockdown, I have seen two patients condition deteriorate and fortunately at the time of treatment we were able to do a scan and identify that they had active clot formation within a superficial vein. Now this is very important to identify and it is serious as well as urgent because we need to treat that person with blood thinning medication to prevent that clot from extending and I, I can show you now a, a, an ultrasound picture of a patient I saw who has, as you can see here now, some clot within the superficial vein. And um, that was important to identify because we didn't want to dislodge it during the treatment, but also we wanted to start some blood thinning uh, injections, which she was able to administer herself until such time as the clot was removed by her own natural healing processes. Um, so that's phlebitis, very important. You can recognize phlebitis yourself if you've got a lump which is hard, red, tender, and which may have developed within an existing varicose vein. That is phlebitis. It's better called superficial vein thrombosis, though superficial vein thrombophlebitis is sometimes used as well, but it's not just phlebitis, it's not an infection, um, it's not just an inflammation. Time and time again, I see patients with um, superficial vein thrombosis, also known as phlebitis, treated with antibiotics, very inappropriate and, and not right. Leg ulcers, again, these are serious and urgent, if, uh, if they're not treated, they will extend. They're very unpleasant, very painful. They can get infected. And the longer you have a leg ulcer, the, the more difficult it is to get cured and the more likely it is to recur. So that covers my DIY guide to medical problems with leg veins. In summary, let me just say that in my opinion, it's important to distinguish between minor and serious. Minor might be spider veins. Serious would be a leg ulcer. Um, that doesn't mean that minor is cosmetic. It doesn't mean that spider veins are always cosmetic. Um, in fact, there is an exception to spider veins, which I'm going to show you. Here's an, uh, an interesting picture while I, while I remember it. Um, spider veins around the ankle are serious and they are an indication of quite, uh, quite advanced superficial vein reflux. So spider veins around the ankle need to be taken seriously. Spider veins elsewhere on the legs do indicate a medical problem, but they might not be serious and they're certainly not urgent. Spider veins around the ankle are certainly serious and like varicose eczema, 
they are indications that the skin is likely to ulcerate. So I would say they're fairly urgent, need to be looked at fairly soon, but not very urgent, if that makes sense. Um, don't confuse serious and minor with cosmetic. They're even spider veins on the leg, they're not cosmetic. They ought to be assessed properly and they need appropriate treatment. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to conclude now. I'm going to stay around for a little while and I'm going to mute and have a look at some of your comments. Please leave some comments. Um, it's a great way for me to uh, be encouraged to do future live streams. It also is a great way for me to find out what it is you'd like to know about. It's all very well me sitting here and talking about things that interest me or I think might interest you if they don't. So tell me what you found helpful and interesting. I'll try and do more of that in a future live stream. Tell me what I forgot. Tell me what I missed. Tell me what you'd like to hear more of and uh, put it in the comment se se uh, section. I hope all the slides worked. Um, I'm not at the stage yet where, where I can live stream and look at your comments and answer them on the fly. I'm going to have to take a break. Um, I'm going to look at some of your comments now. I may go offline um, from live stream and um, go in another room, finish my tea and um, look at them on my, on my phone and answer them. But do leave some comments, leave some chat, just say hi, let me know if you uh, found it interesting. All of this will encourage me to do future webinars. And uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. G, for the tea. And um, it's very kind of Mrs. G to be so patient and understanding with me. Um, she said to me, surely people don't want to listen to you prattling on on a Sunday afternoon. Well, let's see. Thank you for your patience. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And uh, let me know what we might be able to cover in a future uh, live stream. Thanks for watching.